A candlelight vigil tonight for victims of several shooting incidents in North Idaho. On your side's Brandon Fonda joins us live from Moscow. Brandon? Lauren, I'm here in front of this church where a community that has been heartbroken over the last 24 hours gathers together to mourn together. Moscow residents join together here at the First United Methodist Church to sing, pray, and remember the lives of the three who police say John Lee killed Saturday afternoon. Leaders from many churches got together to, for this prayer vigil to honor those who residents say were taken too early. Well, I think everyone's uh, shocked and surprised because you don't expect this to happen in a community this size. I mean, we were in Seattle for a number of years and it happens regularly in a big city like that, but in a place like this, it's, it's uh, pretty surprising. So. I spoke with many of the residents around here today. All are very surprised, all are heartbroken, uh, but they're very happy that they have such a tight-knit community uh, to mourn together. Live in Moscow, Brandon Fonda, Fox 9 on your side. Thanks, Brandon. Police are still investigating the case and have taken a man named John Lee into custody as a suspect. Casey Lund has the latest. A report of gunfire at Northwest Mutual at 2.30 in the afternoon. Police responded and found two victims inside. 47-year-old David Trail, brother to state rep Tom Trail, and a client of his, 39-year-old Michael Chin, a Seattle resident. Both were rushed to the hospital. David Trail died, but police were able to get some information from Chin about what happened. He came in, didn't say anything. He just, uh, when he came into the door that led into the office where Mr. Trail and Chin were inside, he just started shooting. Moscow Police Chief David Duke says while his officers were dealing with that scene, another call came in about another shooting, this time at the Arby's just off the West Pullman Highway. They found manager Belinda Nyber had been shot. Nyber was taken to Gritman Medical Center where she was pronounced dead. Duke says the shooting suspect John Lee targeted her specifically. When he did come in, he asked for the manager and when he saw who she was, he knew who she was and only targeted her out of the other customers and staff in there. She was the only victim. He, d he uh, did shoot. Police were able to find a vehicle description and broadcast that information through the shared dispatch system. Pullman police spotted the vehicle, a black Honda, and pursued Lee for about 26 miles just north of Colfax on Highway 195. The uh, driver lost control at milepost 47 and rolled his vehicle, and he was taken into custody at that point. When Moscow police went to contact Lee's mother, 61-year-old Terry Grabelski, they found her dead inside her home here on Veach Street. We don't have the specific timeline between the shooting on Veach and over here on Jefferson, but, but all three are related within a 30 to 45 minute time. Frame. Police are now trying to investigate the motive behind the shooting spree. They know John Lee was living above the Northwest Mutual office in an apartment he rented from David Trail. They also have information he may have been trying to move out. Police searched the apartment but didn't find anything significant inside. They did, however, find five handguns inside his vehicle. At this time, the only connection police can make between John Lee and the manager at Arby's was that she was a close family friend known well to Lee's parents. That was Casey Lund reporting John Lee will be charged with three counts of murder in the first degree and one count of attempted murder in the first degree. Today we learned that Lee moved away from Moscow a couple years ago and just recently moved back. Police tell us when he moved away he changed his name from Kane Grabelski to John Lee. As we learn more about the suspect in the case, those who knew the victims are sharing their grief of their loss. As the fog settles over the tight-knit community of Moscow, many wonder if there was something they could have done. It's just a sad day. It's just I wish there was something we could do, but this, you know, you feel helpless. Three people are dead, one hospitalized after a shooting rampage has shaken the North Idaho town. I mean, it's, uh, like I said, we lost a mother. We didn't just lose a manager. Pat Rogers knew Belinda Nyber, says she loved her job at Arby's and was more than just a manager, but a mentor. They loved her. These kids loved her. And I, you know, I have a lot of good managers, but she just, uh, well, she connected. This morning, the reader board was changed and flowers were laid outside the parking lot to remember the woman that many called mom. It's going to be a long healing process for this community, this company, the people that work here. Um, 
you know, it's just going to be tough. A similar outpouring of emotion at Moscow Family Medicine, where Terry Grabelski, the adoptive mother of the alleged shooter, had worked as a physician's assistant for several years. This is a total shock. Um, it's an unbelievable um, tragedy for us that we did not see coming at all. Her boss, Jeff Geyer, says Terry was larger than life. Yeah, she's one of those people that when you ran into her in the hallways of the clinic, she was always smiling, she would always say hi to you, those kind of things. And then just in the community in general, um, she sang um, in, a, in a number of bands and, and worked on fundraisers and, and things like that. Um, she truly was a member of our community. Geyer says that he had met with Terry recently and nothing seemed to miss. Absolutely nothing um, distressful or, or different that would give you an indicator there was something wrong. As the Moscow community is still grappling with the tragedy and searching for answers, Geyer has one hope. We just know that we live in a great community um, that is um, tight-knit, and uh, we will be a stronger community because of this event. We'll continue to update you as we learn more about the suspect, the victims, and the motive.